Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem for some of you releases soon, or heck, maybe it's already out. For the NZ crowd though, we have to wait until September and I'm trying not to think too much about it. In the meantime though, let's review some of those LEGO Ninja Turtles sets. One of my favourite LEGO themes that I think is incredibly underrated. Over the next few weeks, be sure to stick around for my coverage over a plethora of sets from both the cartoon and the movie. It makes total sense for me to talk about some of the Ninja Turtles movie LEGO sets, given that this is in anticipation for the newly released movie, which is officially out for me by the time this video releases by the way. Awesome, I've probably seen it by now. This is the Turtle Van Takedown, which released in 2014 to coincide with the Michael Bay produced movie. This set retailed at 100 NZD, which is an absolute joke to me personally. I paid $55 for this around two years ago. I have been thrilled for that deal ever since. See, LEGO have always been brutal with the prices. The set overview here is the Turtles van. It's a rather weird one for me, and a Foot Clan road stop with Michelangelo captured in a stretcher. It's an odd set because obviously the Turtles van should always be made into a LEGO set, regardless of the iteration, but it's funny because this scene here actually never happens in the movie because the Turtles don't have a van. The Turtles get their van at the very end of the movie in the last two minutes before hitting credits to tease the next movie, so it better matches Out of the Shadows, but even then it doesn't, because in Out of the Shadows they have a different vehicle. That movie also didn't exist yet and we didn't get sets on that, so we're judging this based on the 2014 movie and it's a really fun note to make. This does not happen in the movie, period. I'll start with the prison gate area, again, this is all made up, or maybe it was all concept art stuff. It is decent, but it also uses pieces that could have gone to the van. I remember when I first built this, I took it apart immediately afterwards and I just displayed the van. I do like the stickers that he used, it feels very militarized, kind of feels like a Far Cry game to me. The checkpoint has a gas canister here, which if you shoot it, it will explode. I know so, because there is a peg feature here, where when you press down hard enough, that cell tower does blow up. It's serviceable, but it wasn't necessarily needed here. What I would have preferred, actually, is if the pieces had been used to build a quad bike or something instead for the Foot Clan. The stretcher that's holding Michelangelo captive is actually pretty cool though. Michelangelo's turtle shell means that he can't really be positioned very well against a wall, and the ground plane here uses no studs either, so he's held in place entirely by the arms on the stretcher. And he's really solidified in there as well, and I think it works great for what it is. The van is obviously the biggest selling point here, and it is actually pretty cool. The weird shaping does help distinguish it from the cartoon one, and I feel both were worth getting. Not for the $100 price tags though, that's ridiculous. I'm always interested in LEGO vehicles in general that don't utilize an existing mold as the foundations. You can see here that the van is actually just the flat plate with some bricks on top. There's a few features all around here. The top section has a satellite dish for some incoming transmissions. There should be an antenna piece here at the back, but I have misplaced it, but it also isn't accurate to the design anyway. There's some flick fire missiles up top for blowing up the Foot Clan's roadblock, the ladder at the front can be moved around, there's a winch at the front as well, and the mirrors can also be moved a little. The doors also slide down, which today is actually a rarity to have moving doors in a licensed vehicle. The doors do feature flick fire missiles, so there's four missiles in total. The roof is also easily removable so that you can access the inside of the van easier, which will help with displayability. Although there's actually not a whole lot that's going on in here. There's a wheel for driving, but no seats. There's a computer at the back, presumably for Donatello, and there are some areas to place the weapons, but that's it. Poor Turtles actually have nothing to do in here. Moment of truth though, and yes, with some careful placement, you can in fact fit all four Turtles in the van and it will still fully enclose. Now onto the most exciting part of this, the minifigures. This is Michelangelo, who is currently the first and only time he's appearing on this channel for reviews. None of the Michelangelo sets that I own are currently available for filming yet, which is something that I plan to change later on down the track. The turtles here are some really great minifigures based on LEGO's adaptation alone, not necessarily based on the movie's designs though. The movie version of Michelangelo was only available in this set, so you did need to get this one in order to have a full collection. The turtles are quite scary in the movie, as everyone has made it very clear over the years, but the figures are so drastically different from those cartoon figures, I really have to commend LEGO on this. Just like the cartoon figures, not only do these turtles all use brand new head molds, but they also have a new shell, and better shells in my opinion too. Mikey uses a brand new shade of green, and his sunglasses are printed onto his torso, and he features some black shorts as well. The shell is covering the turtles' necks, and it features a stud on the back for accessories. Removing that shell, you can see that there is some printing underneath. Compared to his counterpart, Michelangelo feels very different from the past figures. I don't really know why they went with such a serious toned look for him here, when even in the movie he is still the ridiculous one, so 
I would have preferred a smile expression. Raphael might be my favourite of the movie figures compared to the all new ones and compared to the cartoon selves. Raphael was also available in the Big Rig Snow Getaway set with Leonardo. He features the most distinct change in his colour and a different head print as well. And each of the turtles also feature different printing on their shells. Here, Raphael has bandages on his shell compared to Michelangelo's clean look. The heads for the turtles are still the exact same head, which I think is a little distracting here for Raphael personally. Raph in this iteration wears a do-rag compared to some of the traditional mask looks of the brothers, which isn't actually anything new for the turtles, they've had bandana masks like this before, and I do really like that we finally got something fresh in Lego for the masks. But because the turtles use the same headpiece, they've just painted the top of the head to match the rest of the mask. Still, I guess I do prefer this than if they kept it as a regular mask. Raphael pretty regularly throughout the movie had glasses on top of his head as well, so it is a missed opportunity to not print those on. Compared to his past cartoon self, he is significantly darker in his tones here. It is very cool to see. Here he is compared to Mikey, where the colour change is easier to spot, but unfortunately, he is the only turtle of these four with a colour change. Leo and Donnie would borrow Mikey's colour tone, so only one out of the four movie turtles look different. I wish we got at least one of them to look a little bit different, because they do each have their own tone in the movie. Here is Vern. Usually he's a minor antagonist and a reluctant ally to the Turtles. In this movie he was played by Will Arnett, but the likeness really doesn't match. Just a generic head that's used across a lot of themes. He has nice civilian clothing, which looks like Harry Potter's torso, but it's not. It actually is an exclusive piece here. He also included a cell phone, but I would have liked to have seen him include maybe a camera, given that he is a cameraman. I don't really have too much to say about Vern. This is the foot soldier in tactical gear and attire. The depiction of the Foot Clan in the 2014 movie is an odd one. They're a lot more like mercenaries than they are ninjas. They use guns and face paint and they look like Call of Duty skins. So for the militarized depiction in Lego, I do like these figures a lot actually as cannon fodder type. They are very distinct compared to their cartoon selves, and they do appear in all three sets. There's even a little bit of variety between the figures, but only in one other set. Imagine that. They do feature some useful parts too that could be good for customs outside of the Ninja Turtles line. Instructions, strangely enough, came in two booklets. One of mine is missing the front page, classic NZ aftermarket moment right there. The theming is the same green that's featured in the other sets from the cartoon series as well. We have a figure roster of all of the minifigures from both Cartoon Wave 2 and the Movie Wave. It's a really good looking mix of minifigures in this theme. The other manual features play features highlighted from the set, and Max from LEGO Club has been killed. That's my look at the van from 2014 from the Ninja Turtles movie LEGO line. It's a neat weird choice of a set because it's not really attached to that iteration of the Turtles. I'm thankful that we do have it since I really love the sequel Out of Shadows movie, and this kind of fits that at the very least because at least they have a van in that one, and even I can't help but be amused by having a turtle van with all four turtles. However, in order to achieve that you did have to spend a lot of money back in the day for both the van and the lair in order to get all four of the turtles. I'm not really so sure if that would have been worth it back then. Close to 300 NZ, so I can't really endorse that. If you enjoyed this retrospective look at a LEGO Ninja Turtles set review, stick around for some more videos around this line. Liking and subscribing does help to support our channel. As always, take care.